I would arguably the two best recent VST synths, Roland's SH2 plug-out and NI's Monarch synth, be monophonic? Why would there even be such a thing as a virtual monosynth in 2015, I hear you ask? Surely, only being able to play one note at a time is a ridiculous limitation for software that could easily be overcome. As usual, the answer is not so simple. In this tutorial we're going to discover how to upgrade any VST monosynth to a polysynth using a free JSFX plugin for Reaper. I will also provide links and additional information on how users of Appleton Live, using the free Max for Live, can do the same thing. The old monosynths from the 70s and 80s could only generate one note at a time because either the technology to play more was not invented yet, or the cost of making the hardware polyphonic was too high. Polysynths are still very expensive to manufacture today. In the world of VST instruments, these restrictions don't apply. So why force the synth to be monophonic? To make a 100% authentic emulation, then the emulated synth should have the same features as the original, including the limitations. If we add new features like polyphony, we're going to be creating sounds that the original could not make. Another reason not to add polyphony is it will make the emulation more complex to create. If all the subtle interactions and the different analog voices are going to be emulated, this will take more CPU and more coding. Some people would much rather have the option to be able to play chords, even if it meant the emulation was not being faithful to the original. Some emulations, like the Tal Baseline 101, do let you select a polyphonic mode that the original SH-101 did not have. Some other synths, like Roland's new SH-2 plug-out and Native Instruments Monarch synth, do not. This is a real shame, as these are two of the best analog emulations available. There are a couple of workarounds not involving Reaper for making polyphonic instruments out of monophonic ones. If you check the blog post, I've provided the links there. Reaper users rejoice. There is a workaround that enables you to turn any monophonic instrument into a polyphonic one using multiple copies of the instrument and a special MIDI routing plugin. First, you need to download the awesome plugin pack provided by the talented programmer Tail from Reaper Stash. The pack has many plugins included, but if you only want to use a MIDI router, then locate the file Poly Mono MIDI Router and place it in your effects folder inside your Reaper installation. Now we will create a polyphonic version of Monarch step by step. You can do the same thing for any virtual instrument that's limited to playing one note at a time. Create a new track in Reaper and call it Splitter. Select your MIDI keyboard input and channel number. Hit the record and monitor buttons, press a few keys and check you have an input. Press the new tracks FX button, add the Poly Mono MIDI router plugin and select your MIDI keyboard's input channel. Add another track. We will call the track Monarch 1. Press the FX button and add your VST monosynth. Here we will add Monarch. Now let's wire it in. Press the IO button on Monarch 1 and click Add New Receive. Select Splitter. Choose MIDI 1 to 1. This will route all the MIDI data coming from a track called Splitter on MIDI Channel 1 into MIDI Channel 1 of Monarch 1 track. Play your MIDI keyboard. You should have sound. Like this. Having many voices at once will overload the mixer. Let's turn the track down 10 dB. Now we will duplicate the track as many times as we want voices to play at once. The final stage is to alter the MIDI routing so Tails plugin can do its magic. Click the I.O. button on the splitter channel and make the following changes. Now we can play Monarch polyphonically as well as change the patches via MIDI and use our MIDI controller. The next stage would be to link every parameter together inside Reaper so we could edit the patches polyphonically. But for now we will have to be content with this powerful new Moog polysynth we have to play with. 
I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. To help support me making more, please join the Learn Digital Audio YouTube channel, check out my blog, and even more importantly, have a look at my Udemy courses.